Hello everyone and welcome to a bit of a special Zero K, well, now is it done. I'm your host Dominic, also known as Shadow Fury, and we have a match between six people and seven people. So, to go through in order, we have Wesley on spiders, Red of Adra on airplanes, Red Common on spiders as well, Lord of Trolls on a gunships in the ground, rather unusual for gunships, but not a bad place to put for defensive purposes, Harvey as another spider player, and Turv going in with spiders as well, rounding on four spiders for the red team. And Wesley Blue is going to be going for a second one, as they do have two commanders on account of being on the six-person team and being the highest LO player. On the other hand, on the white, on the blue side, blue teal, whatever, we have Cloaky for Catastrophe. We have B-Man ba ba Hansen on spiders. We have Zenfer on gunships. Satan 3-Cat on airplanes venom on spiders which does not surprise me in the slightest bearded also on spiders and lastly dark gf on spiders so spiders not surprisingly very popular i mean they are good spiders are a strong factor they're currently very strong in the meta and i mean as we can see clearly here so the thing is that because this is a very large map involving a huge number of players do expect that i'm going to be focusing a little more on broad terms not likely to focus on a whole lot of tra on mac micro stuff. Mostly going to focus on macro stuff. Probably going to be zoomed out a fair bit. Going to try to keep it small, close enough that we can actually see the units going around. But it's it is a 13 players on a map. I do going to make sure that everything is being shown. I will also keep up the map marks because that's fairly important for how the teams are communicating with each other, so that we have an idea of what they were thinking. Anyway, the game itself, bit of a front line already being established, somewhat. Just for scouting purposes, by a handful of fleas set up by the Southwest team. And again, that's kind of what you want to use spiders for as a natural thing, just for the scouting. Same time, though, Northeast fairly focused on setting up that Northwest expansion, as well as the Southeast expansion. So the Northwest, there's the Northeast very quickly taking as much as they can. At this point already, starting at 100 metal per second. But that's that's our baseline, is 100 metal per second. Southwest team is a little bit e-stalling, though. They're managing to use up their metal quickly enough, or at least have enough storage, but... Again, they need to get more energy, and it looks like Lord of Trolls already on that with a geothermal plant, so it won't be too big of a problem for too long. At the same time, the Northeast is well ahead of that. So the Northeast currently with a bit of an economic advantage. Of course, they do have an extra player, which does help somewhat. Not a huge amount, just bear in mind, there is that extra commander for Wesley. So the Southwest team has the same number of commanders, they simply don't have as many actual physical human brains controlling that number of players. Still... At this point, Southwest looks to be going a little bit more aggressive, trying to find any holes in the territory that they actually take advantage of. At the same time, though, Northeast, they don't really care. They're 20 metal per second ahead now, having taken the Southeast and Northwest. And they're way ahead in terms of energy, which is leading to 23 metal per second overdrive on top of everything else. So yeah, at this point, Northeast is very comfortable, and Southwest, they're basically going to be playing catch-up. Some harassment, of course. They are trying to get into the Swifts to find some room to get in. And at this point, there are open spaces. I mean, this Weaver is he that's very vulnerable. There's not a whole lot else really defending overall. And it looks like we are going to see some Weavers being harassed a little bit, but the Lotus there will stop the Fleas from doing much. Still, though, the thing is, there's not a whole lot to do when you just have Fleas. Your opponent's coming in with a bit of raiding off the... Well, okay. A bit of raiding off of Recluse. Sorry, Redback and Venom. But really, again, at this point, not a huge deal. I don't expect to really see any massively decisive game-changing things until we start getting into higher level striders. Currently have a strider hub being built up by Zenfer. Not sure if we're seeing anything along the same lines over here in the red side, on the southwest side. Looks like it's not yet gone for striders. Again, the southwest side is behind 50 metal per second compared to the northeast side. Very, very rapid economic advantage from just taking those two expansions. And again, that's... Well, not to mention the fact that the energy is only just now for Southwest been up enough that I can actually spend all their metal. And at this point, looks like a bit of a skirmish going on in the center of the map, which should go Southwest's way, but really that's simply defensive. That's stopping Northeast from breaking into the territory and doing too much damage, but not a whole lot of actual progress is being made for the Southwest side. On the Northeast side, they're busy with the Strider Hub. They haven't started building anything yet. I'm a little curious what the plan is with that. Zenfer's got one of those. Looks like they're the only ones going for the Strider Hub, though. The rest of the blue team is basically just sticking with their main factory. Not really going for anything super fancy yet. Though I'm very curious what kind of Strider we're going to see, because 158 metal per second, I realize that's being split among seven factories, but even then, 
it's still going to be an easy 40, 50 metal per second to spend on on any striders without getting at a disadvantage army-wise compared to the Southwest team. Southwest team, at this point, unable to find really any way in. And to be fair, the Northwest is basically completely locked down. The Southeast is a little bit more vulnerable. The Four Lotuses and a Stinger, that can be taken care of no problem with six players' worth of units. But again, a lot of them are just trying to focus on maintaining that front line. Make sure that they don't lose the what metal they have. At this point, it's only like 20 metal per second gap, so it's actually quite viable if Northeast goes for some striders that Southwest could come in, be a bit of a surprise. And we are just seeing an early Dante. Okay, five minutes in on a 6v7, a Dante is no real surprise. I'm thinking we'll start getting into Banthas. If we get detriments, that's when I'll think, okay, there's a major advantage army-wise going in the Northeast side. At this point, though, it's basically just center skirmishes trying to, trying to maintain control. Transport is coming in, though, and we do have what looks like a recluse drop, if I'm not mistaken. But it's also kind of hard to tell. That looks like it is... No, it's a weaver drop, my bad. And I'm not sure it's going to be spotted either. It looks like we are going to be seeing... No, it's not going to be spotted at all, so we were just dropping in a little bit of radar, giving the Northeast team that much extra vision on this, on this expansion here, which is being heavily assaulted. And quite honestly, it doesn't have any real defenses against Redbacks currently in place. Sorry, I guess Reckless is currently in place. The Redbacks, they're there. They'll get themselves killed. Locust should be able to deal some damage, but it's hard to say because, I mean, with Reckless being the way they are, it's actually not unlikely they will be able to kill off Locust. But the fleas coming in here will be able to stop the Reckless's, completely wiping out the Assault group and saving the South, the Southeastern expansion of the Southwest team. Same time, though, that Dante should be nearing the front lines, but not already there. Oh, no, it's actually not even being very heavily focused on. And, in fact, we are going to be seeing a counterattack coming in here. Again, this Northeast team is focusing a little bit on that Strider, which does provide Southwest a slight opening as far as potentially getting a bit more money worth of units in. Allowing for that extra bit of damage in the center, but the question is whether or not it's being attacked. At this point, we can see the red team has already kind of established this is where they expect the front line to be. And at this point, that's, they're actually crossing over that line quite well. The southeast, again, the Southeast is basically undefended. Some Swifts coming in here for the Northeast team, trying to do what they can to help out a little bit against the Redbacks. That won't be massively helpful against this many Redbacks. That's what, 12 Redbacks coming in here already? Yeah. That will just get rid of the Lotus. I admire, I like the use of the Circle Guard here, and I like the fact that there is this set of Swiss here to provide a little bit of extra resistance, but as soon as they get close enough to start damaging the Redbacks, the Redbacks will wipe the floor of them. Same down the north side of the map. Small attempts to try to break in. Reckless should be able to break through the Stardust for the Harmus to get in, but that's not going to matter. The main story here is, of course, the Redbacks coming in and actually having a bit of a harder time than I would have expected. Mostly because the Ronin coming in in the back. Really, these Redbacks are on a bit of a suicide mission. They should be able to break through without too many issues, but they are not committing, and that's a bit of a shame. If they got rid of the Geothermal Plant, that would be, well, that'd be nice, and they will be able to get rid of the Ge Geothermal Plant indeed. Knocking out that southeast. Unfortunately, no force is able to follow up for the southwest team to be able to break up this southeast expansion. So, damage was done, but it doesn't look like it's going to be reclaimed by the southwest team. If the southwest team managed to get that, we'd have a more even game right now. But at this point, it's kind of tricky. The northeast team has lost two major expansions, which is a big blow for the southwest team, or big blow in favor of the southwest team. The northwest team coming in with a Dante drop. Along with another Dante following on, and it looks like that's just going to the front lines. Just for extra defenses. Not doing anything super cheesy with it. Just sending it up to the front lines to make sure that it stays around. And at the same time, the Southeast Expansion actually has been taken over by the Red Team. Southwest has managed to secure the Southeast Expansion, at least for now. But hey, that's evening things up. Considering the economic disadvantage they had at the beginning, that is a nice advantage. On the other hand, though, Harvey and losing their commander at the same time to that Dante. So, win some, lose some, but they did win a lot in the way of, econ of economy. I mean, that commander will still kind of be avenged, economically speaking. That was four metal per second, but we're gaining 10, or gaining 12 and a half. Or, no, that is 10. Gaining 10. I mean, not exactly the trade, but still, it will be worth it. At the same time, though, the question arises, what else does Southwest have planned? Now that Southwest does have a bit of an economic advantage... What are they going to do here? At this point, use their armies remarkably effectively. Nothing is really coming to stop them here. The Dante has actually been... I think torn pieces when I wasn't looking. Nope. It's not apparently. 
But Dante is coming in here. I thought there wasn't a Dante here. It must have been torn to pieces without me looking because I do not see it. My bad. But at the same time, yeah, Southwest is doing a fine job holding on to the north side of the sand to the south side. Also managing to hold on reasonably well, not losing too many units in the process of defending that. And there comes the Reckless. Dante's burned his D-gun, so the Reckless and Redbacks can come in basically for free at this angle. I and mean, the Dante's going to try, but again, that's a heat ray gun. It works best at close ranges. Which is why I'm wondering if we're going to see anything other than Dante's come out from the Strider over by Zenfer. Since, at this point, Dante's are a little bit obsolete. I think, I mean, if they come in and do some damage close up, sure, but... Otherwise, I'm not really sure what effect they're going to have possibly on this match. Certainly going to have a difficult time actually maintaining that positive effect on the count of the Grizzly coming in here, making it almost impossible for the Hercules to pick up anything, and that Hercules should be going down right... Ooh! Never mind! No, oh, whatever. I was right. I was right. The Hercules is going down, indeed. They don't take any damage in the process and being knocked very far away from the front lines. That is unfortunate. At least it's right next to Caretakers for a bit of healing, but... Well, so much for that Hercules. Same time, we do have jump bots coming in here for some scuttles. Looks like we might be getting a few comm kills coming in, or possibly... It might be defenses for extra Striders. I'm guessing that's the expectation the Northeast team has, is that Striders will be coming fairly shortly. And... No, I mean, they have Grizzlies. They know the Grizzlies are up, so they, that is an option to go for. We also are having a Trinity pop up as well, so within a few minutes we should start seeing some, some Shinies. That'd be kind of nice. I mean, okay, not in... Not for the Northeast team, unless the Northeast team has anti-nukes that I haven't seen yet, which I don't see yet. I think the Northeast team hasn't quite thought ahead to the point that maybe they're going hit, to get hit by anti-nukes, because anti-nukes are a thing that might be useful, but nope. No, that that's going to be actually very effective for the Southwest team. Started out with a disadvantage, but now turning it quite around. I mean, the Southeast expansion still being under some fire, but the Southwest team has basically secured it. It's a little bit lightly secured, but it's more that they're... The thing is, basically, the Southwest team was using this expansion as a firebase, and that worked beautifully. But at the same time, the Northeast team doesn't really have anything nearby that it can use to stage an assault on this Southeast expansion. So at this point, the Southwest team has a much better chance of actually defending the Southeast expansion than the Northeast team has of assaulting it, without spending all their money and taking money off the front lines, which, at this point, considering the attrition advantage for Southwest, minor though it is, probably not a good idea. Not to mention the positional advantage of the Grizzly here. Granted, the Crab in the way to try to help defend against it, but still. It is there, and it is relevant. And that is another Dante basically being forced off the front line. So really, Southwest team, that they have a bit less money, and they have a bit less, or a bit better attrition, a bit less money, they have a much better front line position. Again, if we take this drawing as kind of indicative of where the red team expected the front lines to be, they're doing a fine job maintaining territory outside of that. And a commander goes down as well. That looks like it was Turvey's commander. Turvey's commander going down in a bit of an ill-fated assault over to the northwest. It, the northwest side, I can kind of see where the logic is. I mean, the southwest is taken out, or southeast is taken out fairly easily. But no, the northwest side has a lot more defenses to it and not as many units that were nearby. And it's not 13 redbacks. That was what you needed for the southeast side, not for the northwest side. Dante, on the other hand, has been dropped in the right spot, so it should be able to handle... Well, some of the caretakers, but again, this is kind of a similar situation to near the southeastern expansion. There's nothing really here. There aren't really any assets the southwest team has that they need. I mean, they were setting up an assault or trying to stage something as a firebase to try to take this northwest expansion, but it wasn't a whole lot of material advantage. I mean, again, losing this territory is annoying as far as assaulting this northwest, but there's no mechs being destroyed, and the Dante goes down in the process. So if any workers get up there, well, that's southwest team getting a bunch of reclaim for themselves. At the same time, of course, there's that shiny. Or there's the... Well, not the shiny yet. We've got two seconds before we get a nuke up. I'm not sure if we're going to be seeing all the nukes... Sorry, two seconds until we got the silo up. Another three minutes before the nuke actually pops up, so... It'll be a little while yet. But again, I don't see any anti-nukes up. I don't see any scouting for the anti-nukes either. Scorpions are going to be on the way, so at least we have that. But no, nuke silo is being built up by the Northeast team as well. But neither team has decided now is the time to go for anti-nukes. However, Northeast team has decided now is the time to go for detriments. Considering they're 50 metal per second, and, well, they're fluctuating, but still 30 to 70 metal per second advantage. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. A little expensive, but so far, Northeast has been able to hold the line well enough. Southwest, I still think, has a bit of an advantage, but no, Northeast actually is not doing a bad job just pushing, grabbing some reclaim, and going with the recluses. Just mass reckless on the front lines. The southern side is basically just an air war trying to protect the commanders, but this northern front, that is definitely where the recklesses can do their job. 
Grizzly's coming in to try to defend. The Recluses should be able to at least deter them a little bit, but I do agree with the Recluses retreating. The important thing is to hold the front line, especially with the detriment coming. Just hold the line until the de detriment comes. How long is it going to be? Okay, well, hold the line just for now. Maybe not until the detriment comes. That's a bit of a pipe dream. I don't think there's enough money being pushed into that detriment right now. But, you know, maybe, maybe they'll switch over the investments a little bit. Just change, you know, change how they, how they invest their funds. You know, it's going to have a balanced portfolio whenever you're figuring out how to spend your money. So I can understand why they're not putting it all into the detriment. They do want those recklesses up to try to defend, especially as the Grizzlies have breached the imaginary front line. Crossed over, but not managing to do a whole lot of damage. Again, that's sort of the tr tricky thing with games this large, is how do you deal that much damage? Well, the answer is large numbers of units. That's how Redbacks, again, being the hero of this game, will be able to come in and take out Zenfors Commander. The Scorpion trying to save that, and I believe it will. Or at least it will massively reduce how much the Redbox are able to do, but not enough. The Scorpion getting damaged a little bit by that Geothermal Explosion. And the most important thing is the Geothermal Plant is gone. That being said, the Northeast team still nearly has four digits energy. So it's not a big deal yet, but it is still a bit of a problem. And the Scuttle coming in to finish it off. Why was that Scuttle there? That was a blue team Scuttle. That was friendly fire Scuttle. Works for Southwest team. The red team, they're definitely in a nicer position as a result. And now that entire expansion again being broken. That was the expansion broken earlier. Was reclaimed by the Northeast team and now broken again. So the Northeast team, while they do have a slight economic advantage, largely due to their overdrive. Again, their power infrastructure is amazing. Nearly a thousand energy on comparison to like 500 energy with not anywhere near as much connections on the Southwest side. Again, the Southwest side does have the nuke faster, and if they pick the right spot to nuke, which is here, by the way, hit this spot here, or possibly hit the nuke silo. I mean, nuke the nukes, but that'll be six minutes before that comes up. They could fire another nuke in the process. And indeed, there is the shot. Trinity is a go. Where are we shooting to? Oh, no, it's not a go. It's just, it's just there. It's just ready to fire. Forgot they changed the animation for that. Yeah, we'll, we'll know. Don't worry. It's not like I'm just going to miss it. It'll pop up and a little big thing of nuclear launch detected type thing. That's that's not subtle. Similarly, it was also not subtle. The fact that these, actually, what is now subtle is the way the Grizzlies are moving, thanks to the Iris being built up, which should help a fair bit. But again, this is a front line that has not moved all that much. This section over to the south has clearly been the weakest part. I mean, the thing is, this south side of the map, everything that... Which player is this one? This is Red Comet. Red Comet's been doing a great job here. Like, it looks like it's a combination of Red Comet and Wesley that have been mainly focusing on setting up the spiders. And setting up a lot of these assaults. Taking another from the frontline factories. Frontline jump bot. Frontline spiders will still be available, but hey, no more scuttle coming in there. But that's a bad thing, because we saw before those scuttles coming in there. I mean, Beam and Hansen's clearly helping out the Southwest team with those scuttles. I don't know. I think that. I think the Southwest team threw away one of their best assets by breaking that jump bot factory, but who knows? Maybe b Man Hansen would have gotten better aim in the next fight. So, I can't say it's a good idea to risk it. Similar, speaking of not risking, we do have an anti-nuke coming up a bit slow on the priority, but it will at least be helpful. It protects, looks like, most of the red base, at least the south side of the red base, which again is the part that's been doing the most damage. At the same time, it looks like the Trinity is here probably going to be saving up for three or four nukes. At this point, Northeast team has no idea, so there's no point firing off the nukes too soon. I was I wasn't sure if maybe the Northeast team or Southwest team would fire off a nuke and then use that in order to go like kind of a rolling barrage kind of thing. They fire off a nuke and then use that as an opening, maybe break oh not break the Northwest. They can do that with ground forces, no problem. But I mean like break this stalemate over to the north side of the front. Because the northern front has not moved at all. This entire like this line here that was drawn at the start of the game has been very accurate to how the front has been. It has not budged. If they nuke the front here, I could see them going from that to pushing the Grizzlies forward. And possibly a bunch of Redbacks as well if they happen to have some. And use that to really push forward that front line. Possibly secure a further front line around this expansion here. But that hasn't happened. At the same time, the detriment is on its way. The Northeast team does have that ready, and that's 85,000... <laughs> how much damage do these deal again? I mean, no, seriously, how much damage do these deal? I actually am really curious. Damage, 11,000. So you'd actually need quite a few nukes to get rid of a detriment. But the first one has been launched. And I did not see if there are any anti-nukes on the other side. It looks like not where it's relevant. Nope, that's that's going in there. Going to the south side of the front line. Going north's weak. 
interesting choice. And that is going to wipe out most of the south side completely. Or at least break things open. Break open the pass. At this point, these snipers are still able to do a fair bit of damage, but they have no reinforcements. The thugs are able to get in there. Maybe it'll work, but honestly... Wait, no. Those those are not... Those are thugs on the right side. Those are actually holding off pretty well. Second Uke is coming in, however. And the main thing with the Northeast main asset right now is the fact that they've breached the front lines on the end that's been completely wiped out. So the question, of course, is where's that next nuke landing? And I think it's going to land up north and... Okay, is that another nuke? No, nah, that wasn't another nuke. Not, not a large one. I didn't see any tactical tiles either. Going for the detriment, too! Getting rid of... No, not getting rid of the detriment. Damaging the detriment. Not getting rid of it. Just damaging it. Knocking it underwater. Wiping out the construction for it. Unfortunately, like, a second too late. The detriment got finished right as the nuke landed. So not quite able to do that. But, hey, at least the detriment's underwater. I don't think it's a huge... Is it a detriment to the detriment for it to be underwater? I think it... No, it's not. It's apparently a fib, according to the icon. I don't play with striders very much. I'm not more of a 1v1 player, so I tend not to see striders any heavier than a scorpion. Or occasionally a bantha, because sometimes people are ridiculous and build banthas. Because why not? But yeah, at this point... I mean, the Trinities have done their job. There will be possibly revenge nuking coming in over from the Northeast team. They've just finished their silo. So three minutes from now, we should have that. But again, the anti-nuke is up. Or no, it's not up yet. The anti-nuke will be up. It'll be up sooner rather than later. I mean, it's it's coming. Actually, how many anti-nukes are there? That's the one. That is the only anti-nuke in just control Zed. That is the only anti-nuke in the game. So at this point, the Northeast team cannot really counter-strike the south side. They can counter-strike the northern front. But again, that's where they're strongest anyway. But the southern front having been destroyed, and now Flea's following up just trying to... It's just hit any stragglers, really. Take out what they can. I mean, with this many fleas, they should be able to actually take out most of this base. Zemper's commander should be a bit of a roadblock, but still, the caretakers go down, mechs go down, the weaver goes down. I mean, that's still going to be enough of a blow. It's not even going to matter. Zemper's commander does survive, but really, that's just a herald for the grizzly coming in here, which won't be able to take out Gri the commander in one shot. Not really going to focus on that either. Much more focused on getting rid of the geo plant, and I agree. Break Northeast power infrastructure. That's been such a huge boon to them. I mean, they lost a bunch of it when they lost the Moho Geo plant over to the north side of the map to, to that nuke. Speaking of which, we should have another nuke in about 40 seconds. On the other hand, the nuke over here is... Oh, shoot. Northeast team isn't even prioritizing the nukes. They're actually not even going to get the, their nuke in time. I don't see any anti-nuke being built up either. Again, I might be missing it, but it... Ah, there it is. I am missing it. There is an anti-nuke under construction. It is the main priority right now, and so it should be. Northeast has already lost a massive amount of their assets to the nukes. I, mean, I think that was the game-winning move, was really for the Southwest team to just nuke the Northeast team. At this point, 50,000 metal attrition advantage, on top of now having a 50 metal per second advantage in the Southwest team. That's what the Northeast team had this entire game. Now it's taken to the Southwest team. The Southwest team should be able to push in. The detriment, however, is still up. It is still causing problems with the Gauss guns. Got half a dozen Grizzlies to try to take it down, but unfortunately, they're not really well spaced out. Nor are they really able to actually take it out when you consider the range disadvantage. But Crab coming in, trying its best at the same time. Inferno's coming on. Looks like the... Are they going for the detriments? I really can't tell. It looks like no. No, 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 they're not. They're trying to go for the Northwest. Take out the Northwest expansion. Burn that all down. That's not a bad idea. I mean, the Northwest has been heavily damaged by the Southwest team for a while. But the question, of course, is what to do with the detriment? Because right now, that detriment is not really easy to deal with. The Grizzlies are trying to come around the side. At least when the fleas are distracting the detriment, maybe the Grizzlies can come around the side and start firing at it. I mean, that's... Uh, that's what, 15,000 plus? So, that is... Yeah. 1,500 times 6. That's 9,000 damage per volley on the detriment. Not a bad thing to have. But, of course, the question is, we've got a nuke launched. Where did it go? It's going up here? I don't know. Actually, I really don't know because it doesn't show me... It doesn't show an orders view what has actually been fired, what nukes have been fired. Take out the defenses. It doesn't show me what nukes have been fired. Ah, straight towards the anti-nuke too, where the anti-nuke would have been had the nuke not come in in time. Wiping it out completely. Satan 3 Cat's entire base has gone along with the Trinity and their own anti-nuke. So, basically, all the hope 
for the Northeast team has been lost right there. Knocked out their overdrive infrastructure, or at least one of the major hubs for their overdrive infrastructure. Knocked out their anti-nuke. Knocked out their nuke. The detriment's the only thing really holding this Northeast team in this game at all. And the Grizzlies are doing a fine job gradually wearing away at it. Fortunately, did manage to get rid of the tactical silo, but still, it's it wasn't enough. The Northwest... Actually, it wasn't enough. The Northwest side is being defended fairly well. But again, the Southwest has the massive advantage. They have nukes. There's no real anti-nuke coming up for the Northeast team, which I'm a little bit surprised at this point because we have an anti-nuke up here and no other anti-nukes have been constructed. There's just this giant lake over to the Northeast side where an anti-nuke should have been, where it was trying to be, and where not enough priority was sent to the anti-nuke in order to make sure that the anti-nuke actually came up in time. A little unfortunate for the Northeast team, but honestly, I'm not sure how they're going to get back from there. I mean, we have the Detriment, which is doing a fairly decent job of breaking some of the front line. Has crossed it, has damaged some mexes. Not quite the same gravity of assault as three nukes. Three nuke lakes. Or no, that wasn't a lake. That was, that was already pretty high up. And this lake is being terraformed back up to normal. Actually, now it looks like this is still a lake. My bad. It's hard to tell because of the energy struck. But no, that's, that's definitely a lake in the mountains. It's a pretty mountain pass lake. Shame about the radioactivity. Looks like a nice place to swim otherwise. You know, until your skin melts off. But, eh. Price to pay for a pretty, pretty scenery. It's like, you know, happy vacation in the mountains with your family. It's for free. It's just the last vacation you ever take. So, I don't know. Maybe it's a good trade-off for you guys. I don't know what you guys think, but... I'm not really going for that trade-off. I'd rather live. Quite frankly. But I'm also spoiled. I got a lot of nice mountains nearby, so I don't have to worry about it so much. Unlike these grizzlies, do have to worry quite a bit about this detriment coming in here, finding them with the irises, and honestly, I'm a bit surprised the iris has not pushed forward. I mean, the grizzlies could get close enough and start dealing some damage. It's only 6k per hit, but now with the fleas distracting it, this might work, and I agree with that. Maybe stun. That's actually not a bad idea right now. The detriment has been knocked down to 23,000 HP. That could be reasonably easily stunned. I mean, a bit, a bit of a challenge, but of course the Grizzlies are coming in here and should start being able to actually take care of that. And if, I think if the Detriment goes down, we should see game, but at the same time, the Weavers are in place and the Fleas have been destroyed. I'm seeing a repair coming in very shortly. It's kind of the only choice right now. Also, I don't know what we're actually doing stunning right now. There's there's gnats. Quite frankly, why haven't they been sent out yet? They could be taking out that Detriment right now. Really no reason not to. Anyway, back to the Missile Silo. Back to the shots off the Missile Silo. Artillery onto the Detriment. Funnel Web is going to be coming up on top of that, but the Detriment at least is on fire. Oh, are we going to see a nuke on the Detriment? Is it gonna, if it hits the Detriment, that takes out the Funnel Web. That is going to be a huge blow on the Northeast team. Hard to see. Let's zoom it out. See what happens. Yeah, looks like it. Uh, yeah, looks like it. That's... That, I don't know, a little bit further south. Ooh, that should hit the funnel web, but just barely. It does enough to damage, though. Not enough to kill the detriment. Enough to make up for some of the repairs it's had a little bit. But does get rid of the funnel web, so that's something. Still worthwhile. And hey, another radioactive lake. Who doesn't love radioactive lakes? Well, me, as we've just discussed. But, you know, maybe... Maybe I'm alone in that, because clearly Southwest team loves their radioactive lakes. They've been doing a great job making new ones. The Detriment, on the other hand, is not so happy, but hey, it's still alive. It's more than can be said for most of the South or the Northeast base, and to be fair, though, the Northeast economy has been doing quite fine despite that. And an anti-nuke, one minute away from being built up, so we should have... And actually, it looks like... Is that another one that was built further south? Yes, it is. Anti-nukes are up. So the Northeast team is no longer vulnerable to nukes. Now the Southwest team, they still have their one, no, two anti-nukes now. So the Southwest team is still pretty good for anti-nukes. Overall, this looks like it will be the end of the nuke stage of the game, but Southwest team took a massive amount of advantage from, or I don't know, did a lot of damage. I don't think it was like an advantage. Like a lot of damage was dealt, but really it's been rebuilt. And it's not like a whole lot of territory was taken in the process. Now, that'd be, to be fair, there's a lot of reclaim that's available, which could be taken in the process. And a lot of wasps that are going and taking it, and caretakers that are going and taking it. So I'm a little curious how they're going to progress from here, because again, the nukes are over. There are other endgame options, but I don't think we're going to see those just because they're so expensive. 
We might see some better Striders, but it doesn't look like the Southwest team really wants to go Striders. They want to go for Demi Striders. They want to go for... I mean, they like the nukes. Maybe if they take out some of the anti-nukes, they will fire off more nukes and finish things off. It's a possibility. But again, Striders have basically been the exclusive territory of the Northeast team. And I think that might be the detriment of the Southwest team because, again, they're not able to take out things like the detriment, but they are able to wipe out vast swaths of land up until, well, now, as the anti-nukes are in play, so we are not going to have any more nukes doing a huge amount of damage. Not full nukes, anyway. The tactical nukes could, but strategic nukes, no. So yeah, with that, it's just hard to really say. There's... There aren't a whole lot of options they have. I mean, they're going for the Northwest expansion, trying to take that out, wipe out more of the economy, and sure, that's working, but the Northeast team is doing fine off reclaim. Southwest team, again, and still behind on the overdrive, and Really, in a game this size, it's clear power infrastructure makes a big difference. Honestly, a little bit surprised we haven't seen more fusion plants. I mean, I like the... Oh, I like this. Anti-nuke destroyed by fleas. We should be seeing a nuke fire off into the south side of the map. Like, right now. Because that was an anti-nuke done. And there's no anti-nuke that's going to intercept. Anti-nukes fire their missiles up to intercept nukes going over. So an anti-nuke placed right here would protect basically the entire base. But at this point, yeah, this Trinity could fire off a nuke, take out the south side of the of the north base and or the northeast side, and that would be it. And okay, they don't know that there's an anti to the, the north. That is one upside here is that if they fired off to the north, they would have an unpleasant surprise. The southwest team. So there is that, but the south side of the map is the target. Oh, much to the detriment of the Redbacks, they are going to go down. But hey very least this is going to be it for the south one way or the other this base is done and i think from there we should be able to see see i can't remember the names red combo should be able to see red combo come in there and actually take this out one way or the other and actually nicely placed nuke very nicely placed nuke because that does not kill the redbacks they can still do their job while wiping out a bunch of the stuff in the pass and making it very hard for the northeast team to reinforce the pass the pass fight or the pass part of the front the southern front so the southern front down the northern front is being assaulted by the detriment, which is newly healed on top of the scorpion. And ah, that's the Mohojio plant gone down, making yet another pretty mountain lake. This time less radioactive though. So those one good lake, the rest of them do not swim. Anyway, Ligo's coming in here trying to take out the detriment, but having been fully healed, that detriment is better than it was in the first place, actually, because in the first place it was hit directly by a nuke and it was at 5 6 HP. Now it's at full HP. It's fine. I mean, I expect we will be seeing a fair bit of nukes or tactical nukes coming in here. And Venoms. Okay, or Widows, rather. Widows coming in. That is the secret weapon. Widow up to the detriment. Rock up to it. Come in, I guess, with a bunch of fleas afterwards, because those are the only units that have been really built. But, hey, if it works, it works. Scorpion will go down to a couple of them first. Taking out. Really? Not going to... Not going to take Widow over that, because that detriment, yeah, that detriment's now fine. This actually might be the Northeast team turning this around, but I'm not sure. That detriment should probably be able to get to about here, somewhere in that box before it dies, assuming it goes straight forward and does not retreat to repair. Although, honestly, I don't know. Maybe not having, I mean, considering that all the Widows died to the Scorpion basically running interference, that, that detriment really has no threats right now. If another 20 Widows are built, then sure, that could work. But, I don't see that happening, and I don't see anything really coming up to counter this detriment. I'd like to see something do so, because this game has actually been quite cool, and I wouldn't mind it lasting a little bit longer, which is not something I think I'd normally say, but a lot of crazy stuff's happened. I figured, hey, make more crazy stuff happen. I'm curious to see how this goes. Oh, I see. Harvey's... Harvey is at low, l low frame rate. That's unfortunate. I'm actually quite glad I managed to... I don't know if you guys remember. You might remember that some time ago, I had a bit of trouble performance-wise... That I recently fixed. I'm quite glad I did, because I was able to watch this game. And with that, Detriment goes down to 50,000 HP. Or 55,000 HP. Yeah, sorry, I should complete that sentence first before pausing. Yeah, the Detriment is still going to be able to just wipe out everything at this point. There's... Is there nothing? Is there anything? Anything at all? That was a direct hit by a nuke, which turns out not the strongest weapon in the game. I mean, it really isn't. There's plenty stronger. It's just they all cost huge amounts of money. I mean, we're talking something like... 3,000, 40,000? Yeah, 30,000 to 40,000 metal. I mean, same cost as the Detriment, mind you. Drop down a Disco Rave Party or a Starlight. Hell, Starlight at this one would actually win the game. 
but we do have stun. One way or the other, we have stun. Widows were able to do their job finally. The detriment, six seconds left to take out 35,000 HP. The, the boss fight of 0k. You stun it out, you deal all the damage you can. I mean, it's not exactly a 0k thing, but hey, it works. Although the Nats coming in here do add quite a bit more time. We I mean, normally don't get sort of like boss fights where you have to stun them and then deal a bunch of damage before they get a chance to counterattack. But hey, that's big team games for you. Sometimes it just works differently. Same time though, over to the north side of the map, Detriment's gone to the south side, but the north side we have Grizzlies coming in here into the one of the radioactive lakes. Taking out some metal extractors, not really managing to do all that much else. The fleas I mean the fleas doing what they can and actually is doing a fair bit to distract the grizzlies. Unfortunately for the grizzlies. The terrain seems to be causing them a lot of problems. They can't actually pass through here. Look at the pathing map. It's hard to tell from a glance, but there is a lot of purple underwater. That is, the Grizzlies cannot move without terraforming going on. So they're stuck, unfortunately. They're pretty well stuck. Bit of a shame they can't move while they're floating on the surface, because if they could, they could get out of there without issue. But at this point, yeah, that's about 6,000 metal worth of units that are just stuck. I mean, again, the Southwest team is still better on attrition, but the problem is... They're better on attrition, having lost a bunch of their territory. I mean, the front line was pushed back from the line here to about here. And that's, like, to here? Ish? Kind of? Like, it... Yeah. At this point, Northeast has two-thirds of the map. They've lost a lot of economy, thanks to all the nukes. And put a lot into the detriment, which is currently being reclaimed, so the Southwest team can kind of pull back from that. Though, there's 10,000 metal there. Like, send... Send a lot of units there. You can give an extra 100 metal per second for two minutes. There's really no reason not to. Speaking of no reason not to, there actually is a Strider Hub now. We could be seeing some Striders of their own. Maybe Detriment of their own. Maybe... Nah, just Detriment, really. That's about all I could really do. Maybe a couple Panthers. I mean, the Southwest strength at this point has been in spread out units, so... A couple Panthers might be a better option. But honestly, at this point, it seems to be more of a technical problem. As far as I can tell from the chat, it looks like at least Harvey is having some problems. Oh, Harvey's gone now. But it did seem like there were some issues when it came to some technical problems, like frame rate wise So I'm not surprised. At the same time, though, the Northwest has been taken by the Southwest team. So after all that fighting, it was finally taken. Turve got their expansion. May have lost their commander, but they gained an expansion. Along with Red Common, I mean, the thing is, Southwest has more territory. And they actually have more energy, too. They're in a really good economic position right now. They're in a great economic position. Territory's a little bit off, but if they manage to get back to some of the center, Northeast hasn't really built anything to counter this. They're just trying to... They're on maintenance mode, trying to build up enough stuff to actually deal with this. An ultimatum has been built just in case other heavy units come up from the Southwest team. But again, that's not what the Southwest team does. Southwest team could use an ultimatum of their own, but the thing is, they don't fight with heavy units. They were fighting with a lot of lighter units. Or mid-range units, like Dante's are the heaviest, basically. I haven't even set up a Dante yet. I am curious where this nuke's going to go, though, and it looks like hitting that center. That's exactly where it's going, and I totally agree. Just break that part of the front line. Take it back. Make another radioactive lake. Why not? But yeah, at this point, that just leaves a bunch of fleas and lotuses. That's not a defensive line. On top of the gnats getting rid of this funnel web. Oh, man, that is... That's gotta hurt. A little surprised that these redbacks aren't coming in here and actually taking out the funnel web, though. That would be a very good idea. Or the fleas. That would work, too. Still, the funnel web should go down reasonably quickly. With the Nats coming in here, that's a dead funnel web. That's a lot of dead striders. Northeast has been throwing away striders. I thought the detriment would do the trick, but no. Once the Widows came in, that was it. The Southwest team now has a ton of reclaim to work with. I mean, how much reclaim do they even have? They've got 20,000 reclaim to work with. Seriously, send all the workers on that reclaim. That's going to be like two or 300 metal per second for the rest of the game, probably, or at least the next three or four minutes. Which, played right, could be the rest of the game, honestly. Turn that into, like, a handful of Banthas and just send those out. Although we have an ultimatum coming, but still. Or into boatloads of Redbacks, because those, those have been doing a remarkably good job. I mean, as you can see here, Redbacks doing their job. Pictured on screen right now. So yeah, at this point, the Southwest team has managed to regain the front lines couple of glaze. Oh, nice. Good cloaking switch. So yeah, the cloaking switch coming in here from, it looks like Red of Vadra, I think. Yep, Red of Vadra's coming with the cloaking switch. 
Flaves coming in around the side. Should be able to take out this expansion completely. There's no defenses. I mean, check the defensive lines. This, this is completely undefended. These areas here are mostly undefended. There is hardly anything left. The only real asset on the northeast side seems to be the ultimatum. And even then, I'm not sure that's actually all that relevant right now. There is an anti nuke in the center of the map, though. That... Sorry, an anti nuke nano frame in the center of the map. That is significantly different and significantly less effective. And unfortunately for these glaives, not a lot in the way of walkable land. So the one downside to lakes being made by giant explosions is that you can't walk a lot of units through them. Oh, and that pylon is going to be a bit of a pain. Getting rid of a handful of glaives, but the glaives should still be able to wipe out most of the expansion of the, south, the northeast team. And actually, from there, the southwest might be able to claim this entire eastern side of the map. The center side of the map is still doing okay. But the northeast team looks like they're getting surrounded there. Yeah, so Zenfer's getting surrounded. There's not a whole lot left to hold on to. So I'm not really sure what the plan is from this point, but I'm not confident it's a particularly effective plan. I do like this plan, though. Taking the north side of the map, at least breaking that expansion. Sorry, Tarve, you do lose the expansion, but you did manage to gain it after quite a hard-won battle, and even then, it's still a massive economic advantage for the Southwest team. And they're not pulling Reclaim that much. I mean, as much as they keep saying, hey, push more Reclaim, I mean, they got Reclaim for days. They got the rest of the game handled for Reclaim. That's kind of why I'm saying push more Reclaim, because there's way more metal you can work with. But, yeah, it's still good. Still is a lot of metal to be worked with. And then we got Trinity's nukes firing off again. Not sure where it's going to hit, though, because there are anti-nukes kind of everywhere now. I mean, the anti-nuke here is still under construction, so it's not really relevant, but the only spot that's left on the map that matters has an anti nuke covering it, unless these glaives get into position in time, which they might do, actually, if they were to just rush it. But I think it's... Is this known? Oops, my bad. No, it is not known. But it doesn't matter! The nuke actually just managed to hit just out of range of the anti nuke. Just out of range of the anti nuke. Holy crap. Glaives not quite able to get to the anti nuke. Can I not see the anti nuke? Can I seriously not see the anti nuke? Oh, that's a shame. Radavadra, find the anti-nuke. Kill the anti-nuke. You will win the game if you get the anti-nuke. Or, yeah, get the crap. That works too. There we go. There's the anti-nuke. There's the anti-nuke going down. I think that might, oh, there's a resi resign vote coming from the Northeast team having lost their anti-nuke. I mean, without that, this base is done. And the way that we've seen the Southwest team play, I wouldn't be surprised if they had a nuke. No, they don't. They actually don't. Another two minutes before the nuke comes up. But, hey, the anti-nuke is gone. That's the important thing. As soon as the nuke does come up, that's going to be game. So yeah, Southwest team basically going in with nukes, going in with a lot of light units, going in with as a fairly careful approach, just trying to stick the front lines, occasionally taking what they can, like the Southeast. And the North Northeast team focusing far more on heavy units, getting the detriment out, getting striders very early. And they didn't really work out too well for them. They kept getting surrounded, and that's the thing with a game is that you with zero k is that you really can't just go with one big unit it can help if it's a detriment or something of that level but there are counters to that and it's just important to be flexible the northeast team didn't really have that and at this point northeast team realizes they just don't have anything left to work with and that is game southwest team hard won hard fought battle i mean they had, didn't have that expansion at the beginning at, i mean the very start of the map it was like i said 50 mil per second lead for the northeast team gradually being turned around mostly because this expansion was taken and then the north expansion was being damaged in the center was not secure i mean especially this set of four mechs here this 10 metal per second equation that was huge the fact that that kept being taken away from the northeast team and of course once the power started getting destroyed from the northeast team this these advanced geothermal plants started getting broken that was a massive blow to the energy income where you see the northeast the northeast team went absolutely wild they were very nearly a thousand energy per second and then they lose advanced generator after advanced gen or advanced geothermal after advanced geothermal and end up basically on par. And that was really where Southwest managed to turn it around. Once they got the energy on track and harassed away Northeast Energy, Northeast Energy never got rebuilt. And that meant really like Southwest just kept up because Southwest had the best attrition the entire time. What they didn't have was income. They didn't have the money to spend on units. The Northeast team got way more of that, but again, the Northeast team spent it on a lot of heavier units. Like I said at the beginning, I kind of wanted to see some striders, considering the economy advantage, and I still think it was a good idea. I don't agree with the detriment. I think, like, half a dozen Dantes would have been a better option, or 
Dantes mixed with Scorpions would have been a better option than one Don than one detriment. I mean, that detriment was very nearly paused construction. If that nuke had hit like two seconds earlier, that detriment would not have completed construction and it would have taken getting in more workers to come in and finish off building the detriment, adding that much more time for the setup for the counterattack. So that was kind of risky and there was a lot of time and money put into the detriment. That was 24,000 metal, which at the time, I think there's a 2,000 metal per second advantage for Southwest for attrition. So already it wasn't great, but again, there was an economic advantage for Northeast, so it kind of made sense. But yeah, that lack of anti-nukes was huge. That made it so easy for Northwest to nuke everything out. And again, Northwest, they could just respond to the flexible set of units wherever they needed to. And the Northeast team was investing so much into such heavy units in such concentrated sections of the map. It almost worked. The detriment almost managed to get in and very nearly took out the west, the north, Southwest base. But it didn't matter. The Northeast team, they had the nukes. They had enough units. They had the widows. They had, like I said, the flexibility they needed to take out whatever Northeast threw at them and then counterattack and also make a bunch of radioactive lakes over to the Northeast side of the map. Because why not? So anyway, that was that. I hope you enjoyed that. It was, a, again, a request. Actually, came in today and I thought, you know what? It'd be kind of cool. I've never, I don't really do large team games and I don't expect to do a lot of large team games, but eh, on the off time, once in a while, seemed like a fun thing to do. Also, for anyone who's wondering... I've said before, and just to reiterate, my general policy is that I do games off the matchmaker unless someone's requested them, and requests up to 3v3 I just do. Anything above 3v3 I kind of take a bit more of a discretion to it. Like, I don't all, I don't just do everything requested to me. If it's 3v3 or lower, I generally do. If it's 4v4 or higher, I might. No promises. But I thought, you know what, I haven't really done a large team game in a very long time, so... Let's go for it. Anyway, that was that. Thank you for watching. That's all I'm going to be doing for tonight. I got to rest up a bit. I have mentioned on Twitter that I had hurt my arms recently. They're much better, in case you're wondering. But I still don't want to be pushing it too much. So, one game casted is going to be as what I think is safe to handle. So anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. And... Have a good night, everyone.